Till I say it's over. This motherfucker, this motherfucker DMCA'd my fucking thumbnail for my fucking stream. I, <laughs> I, I, I could not imagine when I started doing this shit, when I started talking about fucking weirdos on the internet, I never for my in my fucking life would have suspected that some insecure fucking faggot would have DMCA'd a fucking thumbnail to try and get a stream to stop. Fuck you. Fuck that shit. What the fuck? I don't I don't even I don't even know what to say to that shit. It's just <laughs> It's just the most bullshit fucking thing. And you know what really what really fucking chafes me about that? Is that it worked. It's that it fucking worked. This spindly limp wristed tubby sack of shit files a fucking frivolous DMCA six hours before a fucking live stream even starts and it fucking works YouTube takes that shit down immediately you know what it is you want to see this fucking picture you want to see what was so worthy of fucking ire in this guy's mind it's this shit it's this shit right here let me show you this this is what did it what the fuck even is it? Did I, oh, did I fucking trash it? I'm such an idiot. Here, I'll, uh, I'll have to make another copy of it. From I have the Photoshop files still, so I just get to kind of resave it. But it's it's the most petty fucking shit ever. It's just it's just a thumbnail. That's literally all it fucking is. And this dude, like, here's what gets me about people. Like, you took this picture. You took this picture yourself. And you put it out there, and you wanted people to look at it. So what the fuck is wrong with people looking at it? It's what you fucking wanted. This is it. This is the thumbnail for the video that he was so, so upset about. He had to fucking file a, a you know, vexatious litigation to try and get it quelled. But he, he like, okay, first of all, this is transformative. Clearly, the market audience for this fucking picture and my thumbnail are different audiences, so it's bullshit to begin with. But it's like, you, you took this. You have nobody but yourself to blame for this shit. Look at this. Look at this. Claim it. Jonathan Yaniv, trustednerd at gmail.com. Your video has been taken down. Video taken down. Copyright strike received. And he has 10 days. See that part where it says counter notification waiting review? He has 10 days to reply. And until, he, until that fucking expires, I can't stream. I can't stream, and I have a copyright strike because I use this fucking thumbnail. It's a thumbnail for the fucking video that never even aired. And YouTube, YouTube thinks that shit's okay. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> That's, that's such bullshit.
it, it's gonna it, you know it, it's not even just like people like me anymore it's not even weirdos like me who run shitty little streams like this anymore it is it is everybody because you hear jim sterling you hear all these motherfuckers complaining about the shit every goddamn day and like it's going to hit a breaking point where where nobody wants to use you i don't think anybody as it stands wants to use youtube anymore and like I didn't, I didn't stream, I didn't upload videos, I didn't do anything on YouTube until I started doing these these stupid little like like video things. And immediately, it's just like every conceivable problem that could ever possibly happen happens within the first like three months of using it. And it's just, it's such a chore. It's such a fucking chore to to, to use that platform because of how bad. Like every song. Every song that I use immediately demonetizes my video. And what's worse is, like, if I only, if I stream this shit to YouTube and I only use DMX's song, it, I, I guarantee you DMX's song belongs to WMG. And somehow it's always fucking WMG. And when WMG monetizes your video, it, they will run ads. They will run ads in a three hour live stream and they will take every fucking penny from that. And you don't see any of it. And it's like, why? Because I use fucking DMX as a joke, as an intro song. You, you get to own my entire fucking video as far as YouTube is concerned. Like, fuck you. Since I'm not on YouTube, I get to say this. We should take these fucking people and we should drag them out into the street and we should slit their throats and bleed them into the fucking gutters. Because then the next generation of these fucking executives will not do this again. They will not fucking do this shit again. They will... They will be terrified of the fucking incel uprising and yeah it's the bankers it's the bankers that's the fucking executives for umg or wmg whatever the fuck it is no i think it's yeah it's U umg universal music group but just fuck these people i can say whatever i want i'm calling for violent uprising fuck this this peaceful protest shit fuck counter filing dmcas every goddamn day fuck this kill these people they're they are fucking cancer and you can't just fucking kiss cancer away you got to excise it with a fucking knife fuck that <sighs> all right all right let me introduce you to this guy again i i was i was literally going into this blind i had no idea what to expect I didn't want to do Jake Alley because I'd have to research Jake Alley. Like, fuck it, this guy, I'll just show you the humble beginnings or the bad beginnings if you're a uh, Lemony Snicket fan. This is the bad beginnings of this fucking stream. Uh, Firefox. Okay, normal day, right? Go to the take, take that off site. Jonathan and Eve. On Christmas fucking day, December 25th, he files a DMCA complaint to Cloudflare. No, I'm not lagging. My stream is fine. If you, uh... Here, oh, is it, is it, okay, let me, let me do this, uh, and this should work then. Sorry, people. People are saying. I think it's a it's a stream dot me thing. I think you have to. Uh, I think you have to. Yeah, give me a second. I'll fix this before I get into Jonathan and Eve. This will be the pre-stream. I'll be right back. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna change uh, broadcaster. Let's see, is this better? Can you guys hear me? No, 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 calm down, calm down. I said I would be right back. Why you gotta, why you gotta freak out on me for? This is not better?
The banner ad is perfect. I can hear, oh shit, no lag now. Everything's good. We're all good. Everybody's happy. Spam hamsters in chat if you're happy. No, it's worse. Try reducing the quality. Yeah, see, this is why I like to use YouTube, because as much as I want to use stream.me, it does have issues, right? Okay. Mm. I swear it's not me. I swear to you it's not me. Is it good now? I see it streaming. Don't I'm not fucking with the settings. Yeah, yeah, it did. Okay. Everything good, everything good. Okay. Okay, now it's good. Fuck you. Yeah. See, see, this this is why YouTube just works. That's the problem. Like, hopefully they get, they get it figured out because I've been fucked all week. If uh, try dropping the quality to five seventy six. If uh, if you're still having issues. All right. I think it's good. Okay, we're gonna go ahead then. <clears throat> Let me show you this DMCA. Because again, I'm going into this blind. I have no idea what's what. I I, I know the gist of this guy's story. I uh, I do not know everything. So it's going to be a a journey of discovery for all of us. And even if the, I'm recording it, so uh, what I'm I, what I think I'm going to do, no promises, but what I think I'm going to do is after this stream, either I or somebody I trust will go through and they will cut it all together. They'll clip out boring parts. They'll make a streamlined edit of this stream. And we'll put it on YouTube. And uh, we'll censor out anything that could be construed as like a picture of him or anything. And if people want the original, uh, they'll be able to find it on the, on the Kiwi Farms. So... Boomer Echo. What the fuck are you talking about? Hey, you're just fucking with me. You guys, you guys are such fucking assholes. I have actual technical issues, and I got fucking motherfuckers in, in chat saying I got Echo and shit. Fuck you. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay, let's continue with this DNC. I'm going to open up every single one of these links. This is the best part. This motherfucker on Christmas goddamn day, he goes through and he compiles a list of, I think, 54 separate URLs of things that he claims are his original work. And I, I just tell him, this is shit's all used fairly, so go fuck yourself. So... Sorry, I'm, I'm still getting messages about stream quality and shit. That's fucking annoying. So I'm just going to go through every single goddamn one, and we're just going to look at it. And some of it might be not safe for work. I don't know. And we're going to discover what this guy wanted to hide from me. Again, I've not done this. I, uh, oh, that's a video. I'll save that one for last. I have no fucking idea what to expect of this shit. We are going to look at every single goddamn one, though. Because now it's a, it's a matter of, of legal interest to determine what this fucking guy is trying to hide. And apparently, he went through the trouble of giving me a, a compilation of his greatest hits, apparently. Okay, so this guy, this is his banner. Okay, his brand, uh, what I am aware of already is that his brand is Trusted Nerd. And uh, he, like, he does, okay, I, I do know this as well. TrustedNerd.org, I'll show you his site. Because, oh, you know what, it's like JY, 
knowsit.com or something. What the fuck is this guy's website? I sent him an email. Give me a second. No, that is it. Okay. So this is his website. It's just a template. You'll notice that anything that's like custom, like this logo, looks like absolute shit. But the rest of the site looks fine. It looks really good. It's because he just bought this off the fucking internet. Let me check the source. I bet I can find where he bought it from. Maybe. No, it looks like the source code is broken. What the fuck? Look. This is improper HTML. It starts with a div class instead of the H... Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? That's funny. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is just a shitty fucking template that he bought. Oh, it's a word. It's a WordPress template. <laughs> That's why this is just a WordPress blog that he fucking put a template over. But don't worry, uh, Jonathan. He, what the fuck is his name? Yaniv? He knows IT. He will help you reach your business goals. You'll see the results. You will see the results of, of his hard fucking work. You'll see them. They work all the fucking time. Don't worry about it. And they'll work within your budget. Because he works for cheap. Because nobody will hire him. Because he's shit. Business development. Business marketing analytics. Highly recommended services. What? Oh, because people, he got people to shell them out. This is my favorite one. Reputation management will monitor and manage your reviews on a variety of platforms. Jonathan Yaniv is not a woman. I stand with Megan Murphy. Jonathan Yaniv in the news, rolling coverage. Jonathan Yaniv, Jonathan Yaniv, Jonathan Jessica Yaniv, trusted nerd. You're not doing a very good job of managing your reputation, Mr. Yaniv. But he will uh, social media optimize your, your, your business and do email marketing. That's great. Oh, and these are his testimonials. So he's, got, he's actually got a couple of people to, to actually give him money for this shit. I don't know how long it's been since he had a customer. I imagine it's been quite a while. Oh, there's a phone number. Ah, uh, but yeah, that's his website. That's what he's very, very concerned with, right? So that, and that's his, uh, I think that's his Twitter banner. Like, he removed this from Twitter, so you can't find this anymore. You don't understand the level of SEO he's operating on? Yeah, I don't think I do. Well, maybe I do. I think he's just shit at it. So this is, this is his trusted nerd. That's the face that I trust. You know what? When somebody pointed out that I just, <laughs> I just realized he's wearing Google glasses. That's fucking gay. You know who he looks like though. He has um, he has what I'm gonna call the the smug pedophile face. There's another person who reminds me quite a bit of this. Maybe you'll see the resemblance. Oh, he changed his fucking picture. He ruined my fucking joke by changing his fucking picture. He did that recently. I think this was the one that he was using for fucking ages. Like this smug, like dead inside looking pedophile face. And you switch back over to this. And it's like, yeah, it's basically the exact same thing. Dead ringer, except for the Google glasses. And uh, somebody made an observation that I found funny that I'll point out when I see it. That's him, I guess, without makeup on. He looks really fucking gay even without makeup on. But that's, that's DMCA. You gotta take that shit down. That's, pro that's intellectual property. That's worth like a billion dollars. Uh, this is a screenshot of his autobiography. Jonathan is a well-known tech reviewer and blogger all across Canada and the United States. She became involved in the world of computing since the age of three, owning a Pentium 480. Who gives a shit? Since then, Jonathan has built up her techno tech knowledge, graduating with a diploma in computer sciences from... Quentlin Polytechnic University. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This is the worst autobiography I've ever read. I've never been less interested in a person, except for the fact that they're using female pronouns or an obviously male name. I've never seen that before. I've never seen somebody keep their male birth name and then use female pronouns. Like, as far as fucking, like, gross degenerate tranny weirdos go, that is genuinely a first. I've never seen that before. 
Uh, but uh, just so you know, legally speaking, uh, it's kind of like if there is a statue, right? Like you, you go to Disney World and all the, the theme park rides and all the statues and all the characters are intellectual property of Disney. If you take photographs of those characters or statues or, or rides or, or whatever, you still own the photograph because it's a, it's a derivative transformative work, right, that you created yourself. So um, taking a screenshot of a website I think has case law showing, uh, you know, uh, affirmatively that if you screen cap a website, you're you're making like a photo of it, and that is considered a transformative derivative work. Uh, this is a screen cap of this is a screenshot of somebody else's tweet and their own personal. Wow, that's fucking crazy. That he would sign under penalty of perjury that this is his his intellectual property. This is a screenshot of somebody else's tweet of art they made of his face. If I notice a ten year old girl that's nude from below, is it weird to just approach her just to bond? Yes, it is fucking weird, but apparently that's an actual quote that he made. Again, fuck this guy. He's so awful. Anybody who abuses the law like that, I think DMCA abuse should be a fucking imprisonment since because it's such bullshit. Oh, this is the this is the extra special one. Here, let me let me throw up a fucking a banner a banner for this shit. Oh, I deleted my my text. I need I need that text to to insert text. Uh, fair use. Hold up. I'm gonna. I need to make it Quattro Cinco. That's the most important font. I need a bold. Make it 72. And I need an outline. I want it black. My outlines are black. Perfect. I want it right over the eyes. Right over the eyes. Can I make it? I need to make it like um like Fast Wave, where it's uh it's got like a back background. Perfect. Perfect. This is excellent. Now, this is a, a proper fucking derivative work. <sighs> I'm drinking a soda pop today. I don't usually drink soda. But today, it's a soda pop day. Uh, I guess that's him before he became... I guess that's him before he started the Soylent diet. What, what do you think the odds are that this fucking guy drinks Soylent? And that's part of the reason why he's such a fucking weirdo. <laughs> the mustache. I just saw the mustache sticker on the fucking stream. Me, that's perfect. <laughs> uh, okay, that's just a picture of him. I love carrots. Carrots wake me up, play my tunes, and put a huge smile on my face. Carrots wants a baby brother. Oh. Everyone, please like this image. Thanks. Keep liking this image. Tell all your friends. Go, go, go. Is this like age play shit? Is he into that? That's gross. But again, this is a this is a screenshot of a picture of somebody else, and he's claiming this is his own exclusive intellectual property. Uh, this is a screenshot of, I think this is Google. Look at Google profile. Another picture of him before he became a faggot. <laughs> if this doesn't qualify as fair use, nothing does. This is about as fair use as it fucking gets. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about the tampon fetish shit as it comes up. Because uh, I, I, I don't... Like, I'll break you the story of what I know of it. Well, again, this is a screenshot of a tweet by somebody. Uh, this is a screenshot of the JY Knows It business consulting with under 72 hours left to vote. We need the support we can to win the Premier Choice Award. Fuck you. You don't deserve shit. Oh, God, he looks really bad in that picture. Here. And... Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I'll uh, uh, this this again. This is fair use of the fucking gift. It's a fucking meme. I, I guess Google, YouTube, Twitter, and WordPress all should be filing DMCA claims about this picture, right? New. Um, he looks like Jared Fogel in that picture. 
That's not a good comparison to make. But I'll go into the pedo stuff later. I'm vaguely aware of what happened with that. Uh, this is a picture of him just being with some chick, I guess. I don't know what's the issue with that. Oh, this is the MP4. <clears throat> just a screenshot of his YouTube profile. I guess that's uh, British Columbia. That's whatever city that is. That's a nice looking city skyline. That's pretty nice. Same fucking picture, I guess. I guess he added it twice. <laughs> uh, okay, hold up. That fucking reminds me of somebody. This is an, an avant-garde fucking reference. I was going to cover this in my Deagle Nation, uh, my Deagle Nation stream, but I did not get around to it because it's like thirty minutes of interview, and I just didn't feel like uh, uh, playing it for everybody. It's not it's not concise enough to be funny. But he's wearing those fucking ears that read your mind right and react to it. And uh this is this is Ruben Barron. This guy was somebody who tried to interview Jace Connors after the Brianna Wu car accident. And He's 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 a stuttering, pathetic Nancy boy, and he's the only other person I've seen wear these faggot fucking ears. Uh, another screenshot of that fucking bio, his Facebook business page, I guess. Is it just a picture of him in a hoodie? He looks like Trayvon Martin in that hoodie. <laughs> with makeup on. Oh, there's the picture. Here, I need my I need my thing again. Save me, fair use sticker. Whack. Perfect. I should really not use um Sody Pop while streaming because it dries my mouth out really crazy. Wow, that's even worse somehow. I'm not even going to bother with the sticker. You just got to live with this one. <laughs> I can't hide the eyeliner. It's a critical detail, this fucking faggot's face. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Okay. Now we're getting to it. Now we're getting to the crux of the issue. Um, so, <laughs> should I, I, I guess I'll just tell you right now. I'll just tell you right now, the, he, Jonathan Yaniv is famous because I think he filed 14, I want to say it's 14 human rights violations in Canada for businesses attempting to remove him from women's restrooms. And uh, this, like, he, he okay... Yes, he's doing this. This is fucking creepy, right? But it gets where somebody pointed out something to me that's really funny, and I'll I'll bring it up again as I as I progress. Same things. These are just like thumbnails. He's trying to DMCA even the fucking thumbnails so they don't show up on Google. No, oh, this is another picture of him. Oh, look, there's a little girl in the background. This is this is fantastic. He looks like fucking Chris Chan, for real. Yeah, I can see why you want to fucking remove these from the internet, bro. Same thing. I guess I don't know where he's at. He's at like an airport or something. Still got makeup on, even when he's not trying to look like a like a fat, ugly woman. Oh, jeez. Now we're getting uncomfortable. <laughs> if you weren't uncomfortable before, uh, now we're getting there. He looks like his skin is like flaking off. He's like caked on the makeup so hard. That any kind of picture with HDR just looks awful. Like he's got makeup flaking into his fucking eyebrows and shit. It looks like he has dandruff. Uh, Trustinner.com. Which of my readers wants to go with to Vegas with me to the Sage Summit? That chance is right there. You can bring a friend. That's nice. One of my followers just wanted a trip for two to Vegas. Let's just say she's a little excited. Oh, he brought a woman. Of course he brought a woman. <laughs> I guess he wants to take selfies with her in the bathroom.
Uh, oh, God. Okay, so this is a proper screen cap of one of his Facebook posts. I did the green and black eyeshadow, and people were staring at me like I'm crazy. Pick on the right is an extremely light amount of foundation and pinkest eyeshadow, which looks better. By the way, there have been trolls telling me that what I'm doing is wrong, etc. FYI. I'm a girl both in form and on paper, so how am I not allowed to use the fa faculties assigned to my gender, not, nor wearing nor wear makeup? He's got some ass patters, ass patters, ass patters. Fucking crazy gross trannies. Enabling this fucking gay shit. Well, there's that picture again. I guess he really hates this picture. Oh, okay. Now we're getting into Twitter DMs or Facebook messages or whatever. I'm vaguely, I'm vaguely aware that he's had some issues with those that I'll try to get into. My five-minute eye look. Fuck. Same picture. Same picture. Oh, they added more to it. <laughs> Different Facebook picture. That's his Facebook. There's that fucking ugly ass banner. Okay, I want. I hope I have this picture somewhere. I'm gonna get to that one last. Up oh, there it is. I'll save that one. Wow, so clean. Good job. You cleaned your room. This house looks like an old lady's. Okay, this picture. Um, we we've seen him taking pictures of himself in women's restrooms, right? Uh, can we point out that th he's wearing that faggy fucking Google Glass shit, but on top of that, he's very likely to be uh, to be taking pictures of people in the bathroom without their knowledge. Like, he's not going to be holding up a selfie phone. Like, he's just got his glasses on. How the fuck are they going to know? Somebody pointed that out to me, and that was uh, particularly, particularly interesting to me. Okay, so... I mentioned the, the bathroom incident. The other incident that he's famous for is, let me just let, me just let a woman explain this for me. Uh, she did a, a video, and I'm just going to go ahead and play that. So, yes, here's that. Live audio, and the fuck is it? Who the fuck is my media capture? Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. And transform to the screen. Sorry, I thought I had this set up already. I must have deleted it on accident. Bam. All right, let's go. Jonathan Janif files 16 human rights complaints oh, 16. against women who don't want to wax his balls. Okay, before we get into this a little, because uh, you guys are already noticing that she looks weird. Let me take an aside to say I will touch on something that is peculiar about the current internet situation involving women of a certain type and the Kiwi Farms. And I promise you I will explain um, why I am, I'm taking this person's side, as, as it may seem. to be crazy a man with balls and a penis going to a women's salon for a brazilian wax of course the women say no we won't do that you're a man two things no woman should be touching male genitalia if they do not want to do that two waxing male genitalia is a totally different technique it needs different skills, and there are tons of salons who do male genitalia, so he can go there. No, he just wants to harass these 16 women. She's so Dutch, not German. 16 human rights complaints, and guess what? If the woman pay him money, $1,500, he will, will withdraw it. He will drop the claim. What an asshole. He's just ruining women's business. At least one of these women is saying that she is harassed by him for months. He keeps calling, messaging, 
emailing her about this. He is stalking her about this. This man is sick in the head. And these women, they even can get lawyers. One called 26 lawyers and they all said no because transgender is funeral business. They don't want to burn their hands on it. One of the women got help, legal help. And you know what he did? He drops his case against her. It's all about the money and shaming them. He's a totally asshole. Well, maybe they should box his balls. The same way they do with women. Put all the wax on, wait, and then... I bet he'll never come back. Gender Trender did an article on this guy, and there's more to him. There are private messages between him and others in which he is asking if it's appropriate for him to ask a 10-year-old girl about a temple. Watch these screenshots. Oh, I muted myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I pause it to read it, right? <laughs> and I, I said, uh, it sucks. On Wednesday, I'm traveling to an island on ferry, and usually they do field trips. That, so that means that tons of 10-year-old girls in the bathroom when I need to change my pads. I then directed a com uh, commentary to Mystery and Eve directly, and I said, you should fucking kill yourself, you frumpy, ugly faggot. And then he's, the person replies, they're young enough that it may not bother them. Kids are more receptive than adults. And he replies, maybe, is it weird to ask a 10 to 12-year-old girl for a pad or a tampon? Again, he's biologically fucking male. I don't know what the fucking issue is. But apparently likes to shove this shit up his ass. If she wants a tampon, though, should I give her one and instruct her how to use it? If she doesn't know how to use it, I would find her mother. If her mother is not there, then yes. And what should I tell her? Like, would I go into the stall with her and help her? Oh, n nigga. Oh, this nigga should be in jail. This nigga should be, like, federally prohibited from ever going into a woman's restroom again just for this shit. He's asking if he, if he should help 10-year-old girls insert tampons as a man. He's just a sexual pervert. He wants women to touch his male genitalia just for fun. He's a sick man. And women have every right to say no. We have boundaries. Stop is stop. No is no. If you ask me, Canada made a huge mistake by swapping sex with gender. It leads to cases like this. And who is the victim? Women. It affects us. I live in one of the most liberal countries in the world. I live in the Netherlands. We were the first with illegal gay marriage. One of the first with legalization of soft drugs like marijuana. But even we don't have this gender shit. And I hope we won't get it. And in fact, I don't think we'll get it here. Dutch people are known for being very direct, speaking our minds. I don't think we'll get this madness here. The UK, on the other hand, is on the fence of becoming <laughs> she as knows. as Canada she knows. in gender politics. And I really hope, I really hope it's not going to get that far in the UK. There's nothing wrong with being a liberal, but there's everything wrong with stop thinking. You have to think for yourself. Think it through, people. If we change the law just to be nice, what are the consequences? Think. Thank you for watching. See you next time. All right. I, I, uh, I hinted, and I think many, 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 many people, based on what I'm looking at in chat, uh, kind of 
figured it out, kind of figured out what I was going to be talking about next. Let me just go ahead and find... Uh... <laughs> Holy crap. I'm actually shocked. Okay, I'll, I'll bring this up because I know these people are watching. I guess I should say hi to them. Um, cut on Firefox again. That loads up. There's a second one too. I actually, I, I haven't seen this thread yet. I want to read it. Um, so this is on Gender Critical. Kiwi Farms to host a stream on Jonathan Yaniv at 2 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. This is, of course, the video that he's copyright struck down. They can mention this. Wow, this dude had some time on his hands. I bet it's more like a lot of bots. So he's claiming to own a stream that hasn't happened yet. Exactly. Copyright claim looks like he's up to his buddies at YouTube. He's hit up his buddies at YouTube. Oh, does he actually have friends in the company? So this pedophile who thinks about helping 10-year-old girls unaccompanied by their parents insert tampons in the bathroom stalls at various public facilities um, has friends in YouTube, apparently, and can just snap his fucking finger and make shit disappear. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that a great thought? Uh, Dan, that was fast. Hopefully they'll find a way around this. He must have a Google alert for his name as he stalks all the gender-critical sites. Most people, uh... Oh, there, there's one with my response. Somebody liked my comment about my dead body. She spelled Irva wrong, though. As we know, Irva has four R's. Um, how long will it take Jonathan and Eve to DMC the response video? Yeah. So they're they're being they're being fans of this because these people have apparently been talking about him and dealing with his DMCA shit for fucking uh, uh, a long time. So they linked to or they were talking about the uh, the DMCA strike that this this thing that started this this Christmas tree of fucking links off at the beginning. Uh, they're talking about that as well. And they're basically asking, hoping that he'll go through with the lawsuit. Because I don't know, I don't know if you if you know this, but um, I live in a country. I'll, I'll actually show you in uh, in my reply because they link to it up here. I say all alleged intellectual properties are used fairly in the context of criticism and ridicule. Send litigation to the following address. And then the following address happens to be not in Canada. It's a different country. It's a freer country where we can make fun of gross tranny pedophiles if we fucking want to. And nobody can tell us otherwise. I like, I like that. And I think he should be aware of that if he tries to fucking ante up and, and send litigation my way. And they're just linking to other shit about uh, Yaniv and other gender, gender critical sites. And a lot of people are talking about the Kiwi farms and like, are, are, uh, are they good or are they bad? And a lot of people seem to find it halfway down the middle, which I guess is fair. The, the, the gist of it seems to be like they're antagonistic towards everybody, which is true. Um, but in particular, somebody linked like an essay I had written. And I guess I'll just read my own essay because it's a fairly good essay. Uh, medium. There we go. So this is what I wrote in regards to uh, this medium post by Better Towns regarding how many people were using like Kiwi Farms information for, for call outs. And basically what I say to him is, while well-written and more on the mark than other articles trying to explain the same thing, your fatal flaw is shared in that you fail to identify an alternative. You could argue that's not your job, as in the job of the essay asking people not to use the Kiwi Farms as a, as a call-out site. But if you, want to, if you want a truly persuasive essay, it needs to be. Here is the problem, the problem being people use the Kiwi Farms as primary resources towards uh, calling out people they don't like, and here is the solution, which is use this other website, which is uh, more towards our liking and less mean to people. But he begs a qu uh, an answer he can't provide. And as much as people criticize the Kiwi Farms, until there is a site <clears throat> where you can be gender-critical 
and say whatever you want and archive whatever you want and you don't have to worry about dmcas you don't have to worry about bullshit fucking litigation as long as there's not a site like that which also maintains a high level of archival quality people will use the kiwi farms out of necessity whether they like the site or not and so there is a unholy alliance a bit of a weird uh mutual interest between trans exclusionary radical feminist and the kiwi farms because the kiwi farms is one of the only sites on the internet right now where uh where you can talk about people like jonathan and eve and not have to worry about it and yes i realize that i wrote possessive your as opposed to contracted you are in the first pair fuck you you fucking what is i see lots of swastikas in chat is that is that grammar nazis are you fucking grammar nazis or regular nazis get it to fucking gather all right don't fucking point out my mistakes <laughs> well written this is garbage N fuck you i made one i'm gonna hide it now i'm getting rid of this shit i'm getting fucking bullied again i can't believe this <laughs> all right so that, i just wanted to point that out i wanted to say hello to my my turf friends who are undoubtedly peeking at this because they care about about their girls and shit and this guy is obviously a sex predator because he's he's talk he's trying to get women to touch his balls and if they don't touch his balls he tries to sue them into giving him money and then he asks about like getting tam okay can we talk about that can we talk about how he wears pads and tampons even though he's a man i don't, I don't even know, i don't even know what to think about that like, I know that some gay men, when they take up the ass too much and, like, stretch their asshole out, they, um, they need to wear, like, adult diapers because their ass leaks. And I'm wondering if Jonathan and Eve's asshole is stretched out to a point of failure and he needs to wear pads to, like, soak up leakage. I mean, that's my thought. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, no, don't be. What? What is this? What is this? Stop being. I'm. I'm just the messenger. I'm just uh, pontificating on the matter at hand. This man sticks tampons up his asshole, and I want answers. I want to know why. Uh, there was something that somebody mentioned. I'll, I'll have to go to his actual thread now, and I'll. I'll just continue to read that and poke over things. Says again, I, I'm going into this blind, and this was all it was going to be. I was just going to like read the thread and spend an afternoon, you know, shooting the shit. But this fucking guy, he's made it personal now. Oh God, I don't have enough fair use banners for all this shit. All right. Jonathan Yaniv, born June 12th, 1987. That would make him, uh, I'm bad at math. I'm pretty sure that would make him 31. Don't quote me on that. I'm retarded. Uh, but he's from Surrey, British Columbia. Who says he is a tranny, but makes no effort to look anything other than a straight incel. Uh, that doesn't look straight to me. Get your fucking eyes. Get your eyes checked, tranny fucker. Fucker of trannies. You're wrong. You're wrong. This is not straight. This is gay. This nigga gay. That's all I got to say on that. Uh, when incel Jonathan was studying comp sci at Kwantlen Polytechnic University, he tried to create a national sex day. Jonathan's idea was that with one million people taking part, he could at least, <laughs> he could at last lose his virginity. <laughs> Jonathan trimmed out around 2017 by changing his name to Jonathan Jessica Yaniv. He says he joined a woman's gym to get away from filthy immigrants, <laughs> but it's apparently racist as fuck. Despite being a minority, a minority himself. Oh my fucking God. It is confirmed. Can we, hold up. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. 
All right, let's just get this out of the way. I know it's fucking coming. <laughs> we'll just put it up at the top. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Did he call up his YouTube friends on his cell phone and was like, yeah, they're doing the live stream. Shut it down. That's, the, that's my mental picture now. Okay, let's read this. How do I explain this without getting banned on, a, on this group and sounding like a racist? <laughs> that's a great way to start off an argument. We have a lot of immigrants here who gawk and judge and aren't exactly the cleanest people. They're also verbally and physically abusive. And that's the main reason I joined a girl's gym. Because I don't want issues with these people, nor do I want anything to do with them in any way, shape, or form. They lie about shit. They'll do anything to support their own kind and make things miserable for everyone else. Can I get some... Hold up. Hold up. I have to. This is. This is... This is preposterous. I, I can't read this and not do this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you expect better from me, but you should know that... You should know by now I, I will never take the high ground, ever. <sighs> Projection. <laughs> All right, um... Those immigrant women don't join these clubs because they have to be in gym clothes. So because they're not there and never will be, it's a safe place for me? I'm so confused. Is he saying that, that like, black people are too poor to buy gym clothes so they don't go to the gym? Is that what he's saying? I, I genuinely don't fucking know. Uh, he was messaging me last night. I didn't know everything that went down in the group at the time, but he ended going on an anti-immigrant rant and sent me three-minute voice message that was basically the same views as Trump on immigrants. I'm an immigrant, says Chelsea Caballero Galdas. I guess she's from Mexico. Um, and then he said that is just how people talk in Canada, which I know is a total lie. I, I like how he, he made these voice messages because he knew that if she screen capped it, it would be harder for her to to save the voicemail. So instead of doing instead of just writing that, he, he recorded it. That's, that's crafty. I've lived in the States my whole life, and everything that you said in those voice recordings, Trump has tried to drill in Americans' heads. I've never supported Trump or anything he stands for. I'm really disappointed you think this way. I'm an immigrant, but I'm also a Canadian citizen. Literally every single one of us except for First Nations are an immigrant. Fuck off. Anyways. <clears throat> Jonathan joined Makeup Junkies Anonymous to ask for tips on how to pass in the girls' gym and now how not to sweat all his makeup off. I really want to fit in, but as you know, it's not always easy. I really want them to see me as another one of the girls. Any tips on how to fit in? Do you suggest doing makeup to go there for a work workout? How do I not sweat off all my makeup tips, product advice? By the way, you guys can add me if you want to talk privately about this, and I love new friends. Uh, when Jonathan actually went to the gym, he was super disappointed that there weren't more hot naked chicks getting changed. No, oh, jeez. I don't know what to do, like go in there. What are the chances of me running into someone fully nude in there? Most people are shy. I haven't been to public pool like that in a decade, but everyone changed in stalls. I wish everyone minded their own business. Oh, that's a fucking rich thought. What can I say or do in the change room to bond with these other girls? Nigga, you don't say nothing. I bet this is the kind of nigga that pees next to you in the urinals and then starts talking to you with like his dick in his hand. Like, don't do that shit. That's fucking creepy. The restrooms I've mastered to some degree. Asking for pads, tampons? Oh, my God. Uh, would the rest of the girls that have their tits and pussy out, even though I don't have the parts for that, you know? Also, like, is it weird to look for the string to know who to ask for one? What the fuck? What? Read this. I'm making it big so everybody on every device can read this. Even though, I, and also, is it weird to look for the string to know who to ask for one? Nigga. Mm. 
That's gross. That's really gross. I can't speak for everyone, but I'd be okay with it. Women are disgusting. If, if you are a woman, tell me if you look for the string. I need to know. Oh, jeez. What the fuck? Irvermom sent me this. Hey, hold up. I fucked it up. There. That's nice. Oh, I like the tampon nunchucks. Oh, I see, I see grills in the chat. They claim no. They claim they do not look for the string. Okay, it's been settled then. Women do not look for the string when they're trying to figure out who to ask for a tampon. Oh my god, the chat is moving so fast right now with just vehement hate and contempt. Let us continue. Um, I wish I could tell you different. I want you to be safe, but in the end, you know that has to be comfortable. Fuck whoever doesn't like it. Uh, does everyone, does like everyone change outside in front of everyone? Where do you suggest I change? It all depends on your confidence. Like if there's 30 girls in the change room, how many of them would you say are out changing freely with their vaginas and tits? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's a Canadian thing. It might be a Canadian thing, but you don't. You don't talk about like a vagina being out. It's like it's like like it's stapled on you. It's it's, it's pretty securely fastened on your body. You can't just flop a vag out. Like you can flop a penis out. You can pull a titty out. You you can't really flop a vag out. And then he sends this picture. That's a great looking picture of of him. Imagine this creature, La Creatura, asking you for uh for a tampon. My vagina is out. <laughs> okay, this is really long. So basically, I'm going... Oh my god, he's so like fixated on fucking genitalia. So basically, I'm going to say pussy regardless of what I do as soon as I go there. Like, even though I'm a legal female in all aspects, I just didn't get the surgery yet. Can I get into any issues at all being in there and seeing all of that? Oh, then it goes on for like a year. I've asked some of my friends to go with me. They haven't said no, but I can tell they don't exactly want to. One of them is pushing this off. Also, how can I bond with these girls? Because I feel like I might cause inconveniences to them by being there and having a dick, I imagine. That's how I feel sometimes, that people don't do things they normally would when I'm around because <laughs> they want to get away from you. Like in the bathroom, I found when I'm in the bathroom a way to... To, to make myself comfortable and them comfortable is if I'll ask them for a pad or a tampon. It works every time, and sometimes it works too well. I'll go up to them and ask them for a tampon or a pad, and they'll want to give me money to buy a box, or they'll talk to me about the products they use and their flow. They get really personal, and we start bonding over periods and pads and tampons. It's pretty awesome. Oh, jeez. I once asked... And this girl was like, oh, I just changed mine. Otherwise, I'd give you one. Another girl's like, my period just started today unexpectedly in the gym. And she gave me like two or three tampons because she had a whole box in her bag. Another was like, just put toilet paper, <laughs> just put toilet paper between your legs, hon. You'll be okay. And another was like, oh, you should try Diva Cup. It's really, really great. And then people want to go and buy them from machines. And they have done that before when I'm in the stall and ask, but if there's a fucking machine there... Why don't you just fucking get it from the machine yourself? Right? That's the logical thing to do. But he wants, no, he wants to harass women. Would the same thing work in the change room? Like when I'm in the bathroom and ask for a pad, like if I hear a girl in the stall next, if I hear the girl in the next stall ripping one, oh, I thought she meant like, I thought he meant like, like taking a fat dump, <laughs> like just ripping ass. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like he's just sitting there and all this shit sound is coming out from the next stall and he's just like flashing his hand over the top of the stall like give me your pad <laughs> like those are some great great female bonding moments <laughs> uh, obviously I know she's on it and I guess that's where it cuts off
So at the gym, do girls bear all... Who the fuck is he talking to? I feel like he's asking, like, different people. Because this woman has a different font. And a different phone. Yeah, this is a completely different phone. So he has to be asking multiple women about this. Uh, do you see tits and pussy ever? Like... Well, really, went really well. I expected more, though. I only saw one girl in her panties. I was expecting to walk in and see girls with their boobs out. <laughs> and he just goes on and on. He keeps asking about how to bond with women. I've mastered, to some degree, asking for pads, tampons, and complimenting makeup and shit. Like, change stall. I'm kind of the same way, even though... If I notice a girl that's nude below and has a tampon straighten coming out when I'm changing and doing my stuff, is it weird to approach her and ask for a tampon? Like, do you want her just to give you one from, like, inside of her? That's fucking gross. Just to bond with her. I bet he would. I bet he would take that fucking used tampon and run. Like, he would just run the fuck out of the stall like, like, a, like a gremlin who just stole, like, jewelry or some shit. Just to bond with her a bit or her period stuff. I really want to make friends in there. Why? Make friends, like, outside. Like, nobody wants to talk to you when they're, when they're vulnerable like that. And in regards to tampon strings, those strings aren't exactly short sometimes, lol. Especially the OB ones. I don't know what that means. What's an OB tampon chat? Pull it out with your teeth? Fuck off with that. <laughs> Sniff. <laughs> Oh yeah, and this is this is the guy, by the way, going into uh, changing stalls and shit with Google glasses on. Just a heads up, and he's he's got his Google glasses uh, set to check for tampon strings. Like if he's looking around and a woman's on her flow, it'll start like flashing. He'll get like a uh, like Terminator instructions on his glasses, telling him to, to ask for a tampon. And apparently, Ob is a brand, so there you go. Uh, bathroom cell stuff like he's asking like like this has to be a third person he's asking the same question stuff like white pussy change you know I, I don't think women refer refer to each other's vaginas as pussies like that's like a dude thing that's like a like a chick you're into kind of thing not every random woman in a changing room. Change panty liner, dry up underwear, the gross stuff that us girls would do, but I might not be aware of. And also, uh, what about it when, you, when it comes to being on your period? I just transitioned in December. Is it weird to ask someone who's naked? <laughs> Is it possible I will notice a girl with... She, he's asking like eight people about this shit. For, some, for fuck's sake, just give this nigga some tampons so he fucks off. <laughs> this is like a different person. Have you ever seen the tampon string hang out of another girl's thing? At least he stopped calling it pussy. I think he got the hint. Okay. This is the clip about... Um, about the 10-year-olds. About how if she wants a tampon, should I give her one and instruct her on how to use it? He doesn't know anything about it, but he's going to help. He's going to help. He's going to give his own special uh, JY Knows IT brand. Uh, what, what's his name? Trusted Nerd Tampon Instructions. I think my period's going to start on Wednesday when I'm traveling to Victoria. And going on the ferry in my first day is usually very heavy. <laughs> what is bleeding out of this guy? <clears throat> maybe, maybe when you become a tranny, a hole to hell, like just opens up on you, and it just leaks like ectoplasm constantly, and you need to like mop that shit up, or it gets infected. I'm pretty sure that's actually what happens. Uh, every sim every single time I take that ferry on the island, there's this field trip with ten year olds. Yeah, we talked about this. I really, really want to use a tampon. I have tons. Pads feel so weird, especially during the summer when it gets hot. 
I have light ones, regular ones, and super plus ones. Light ones are from Tampax Pearl. I have a bunch of different brands. Super plus I have from Tampax Pearl. What if she wants to know how to put a pad on? Then I will eventually... Then what? I know eventually I'm going to run into that scenario where someone asked me for help. Nigga, nobody's going to ask you a goddamn thing. Like, the woman is trying to help him. I've had this happen. I pulled a pad out of my purse and showed her how, how to without dropping my pants and physically showing her. <laughs> and then as soon as she says that, he's like, where did that happen? And what did you do exactly, if you don't mind me asking? How old was she? This nigga, this nigga like locks on. He's got his Google glasses like do 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 do, and he's like, I gotta, I gotta get more fucking details for this. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be inserting a tampon while thinking about this shit. <clears throat> I think my period is going to start. He already went on that. Creeping out to ask FM on little girls. Do girls ever change outside the stalls in the bathroom? What the fuck? Why does it matter? Seriously, we do what we got to do. It doesn't concern you. And then he gives out a phone number? Trying to get her to contact him? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, it was multiple girls. Because this is uh, the... He's apparently been blocked from over 60 Facebook makeup forums for his creepy weirdo shit. And this woman named Ashley says, Recently, myself and the moderator team for a closed group have been contacted by some members who have been receiving messages from Jonathan and Eve. These messages got progressively more uncomfortable for these women, and they alerted us of the behavior. We later learned this was happening in groups everywhere. We want other women and groups to be aware of this person and the types of messages being sent. Attach our screenshots of some of the interactions. There are too many to share them all. There are instances where members were asked to send specific photos of themselves as well as graphic photos of Jonathan sent to them. We feel this needs to be known. And they're talking about him being banned from other fucking groups and shit. Holy crap, I'm so glad I blocked this person when the person wouldn't leave me alone about girls' bathrooms and dressing rooms. And this was him from 2015 talking about lawsuits. Uh, to Tourism Burnaby, where can I file a complaint with in regards to a hotel I stayed at in Burnaby who was abusive and wouldn't resolve the issue? To Celebrity Cruise, hello, I have a complaint regarding Celebrity Cruises. I have sent you a Facebook message with the details if you can. Uh, this is again to <clears throat> uh, some guy on Indiegogo. I have two lawsuits against Andrew Barron tolling over $32,000. Follow a complaint with Indiegogo against him. This is to Executive Corp and Steel Talk. I filed a huge complaint with them, and they are trying to blackmail me to remove the review. And this is to W. Lai. In the laundry room, re replacing fixing the DPT, I filed a complaint. Waiting for the supervisor call back. So he's basically just a fucking menace. Who should probably kill himself. Just saying. I'm not saying that. I'm not wishing physical violence on somebody. Unless they're a UMG executive or a banker. But uh, yeah, this guy should fucking jump off the cliff. <clears throat> In March 2018, Jonathan contacted 18 female waxers who advertised bikini waxes to ask him to wax his she penis and balls, saying that he is a woman. When 15 of the 18 said, ill gross, <clears throat> they tried to contact this person like four times over, <clears throat> over a day. Hi, so now are you female? Yes. When do you want to come in? I still have my male genitals though. Is that okay? I haven't had the surgery. No. Why is that not okay? I'm a female. Jonathan filed 50 lawsuits against all 16 under uh, Kanakistan Human Rights Commission laws for $2,500 apiece. Because J Canada, Jonathan got to remain anonymous in his human rights lawsuits. However, one of Jan Jonathan's victims looked him up on the internet and found out that his shitty internet consultancy from JY Knows It profiled him publicly out as a troon. And that's that picture of his uh, bio. <clears throat> Uh, he's tried to create, <laughs> he's tried to create biographies, autobiographies, uh, on himself and on Wikipedia, I guess, to increase his SEO. 
Jonathan also believes that Canadian Federation of Students is a cult and added this to their wiki entry. I don't even know what that is. What is the Canadian Federation of Students, chat? Is the largest... CFS is the largest cult in Canada. Or a student union in Canada. Founded in 1981, the CFS has mandated to work for high quality, in quotes, yeah, right, accessible post-secondary education at the federal level and provincial levels. It is a membership of over 500,000 full-time and part-time students who want to leave, such as Quant Lin University College and Simon Fraser University from 80 college and university student unions across the country. That's still like, like, that's like what a 10 year old would do. Then again, this was in March 2008, so he was only 21 when he did this. <clears throat> oh, there's his address. And they tried to file. Holy shit! He left this as a comment on some phone number. These curry shoving crapheads do not stop calling me Canadian Revenue Curry Agency Tax Evasion Line. Flood their phones with calls so they disconnect. Wow. I'm curious because people have been calling him a pedophile and shit because of the. Uh, the 10 year old stuff, but I'm thinking something recently happened too that that kind of warranted it. Uh, Benjamin Boyce has made a video about you on YouTube. I think I think it's a very long video if you guys want to watch that. So what is my responsibility as somebody who shares information if I come upon a story of somebody who repeatedly gets people banned? This person gets people banned from WordPress. This person also gets people at WordPress to ninja edit articles. This person gets Reddit administrators, not mods who are in charge of little subreddits who are volunteers, but actual administrators, actual employees of Reddit to ban people who share articles about this person, who write critical posts about this person. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to not talk about this person who in 2008 launched an internet campaign to create a national sex day? Should I not say anything about this person who gives reviews repeatedly to Vancouver, Canada subways over and over again? Should I not talk about this person who contacted multiple salons in Vancouver, Canada and insisted that they had female genitalia when actually they had male genitalia and then brought these independent business owners to the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal for discrimination based on sex or based on gender when these people don't deal with male genitalia, which has a physical shape that's different than female genitalia. What am I supposed to say or not say about the person who infiltrated various female-only Facebook groups and asked very pointed questions, such as this one, about tampons and about uh, proper etiquette within the restroom? Quote, I think my period is going to start on Wednesday when I'm traveling to Victoria and going on the ferry pad trips with 10 room and a girl at her first period and usually they do field trips so that means tons of 10 year old girls in the bathroom when I need to change my pads. Uh, quote, do girls openly insert change their tampons when freely changing? Have you ever seen a tampon string hanging out of another girl's thing? Quote, if she wants a tampon, though, should I give her one? Can I just say that the, the whole obsession about wanting to see the strings hanging out of people is, like, the grossest fucking thing? Like, I can't get over that. Like, that's, that is, like, one of the least sexy fucking things imaginable is, is, like, a tampon string. Like, get the fuck out of here. ...an instructor on how to use it. 
And what would I tell her? Like, would I go into the stall with her and help her? That sounds so weird. Quote, like when I'm in the bathroom and ask for a pad, like if I hear the girl in the next stall ripping one, obviously I know she's on it and probably has one, so I'll ask her. But when it comes to change rooms and stuff, if I notice a girl that's nude has a tampon string coming out when I'm changing and doing my stuff, is it weird to approach her, to ask her for a tampon or a pad? just to bond with her a bit. Those strings aren't exactly short sometimes. L-O-L. Quote, if there's like 30 girls in the change room, how many of them would you say are out there changing freely with their vaginas and tits out? The same person who writes sex toy reviews that go like this, quote, Not only does this vibe looks sexy, it feels sexy. I put this in my... Oh, we didn't even fucking talk about the fucking, um... Oh, we'll have to get to that. <laughs> I'll have to look that one up. ...the purse and whip it out whenever I need some vaginal stimulation in the middle of the day, in a private place. It's small, discreet, and full of power. I just wish it was easier to insert. What is my responsibility to speak or not to speak about this person? Should this person be able to go around and shut down any criticism of them? Should this person be allowed to control the flow of information about themselves when they present such a problematic character? This person who furthermore is likely putting women and young women and girls in danger because nobody's allowed to criticize their behavior and who is putting at risk the trans rights activism, the true trans rights activism that wants to make sure that trans people are accepted by society. And then this person comes along and builds a perfect straw man of somebody who wants to dress like a woman but still have the instincts of a man. What should I risk? What should I not risk? Should I just turn a blind eye to this? Should we all just turn a blind eye to this, to allow this person to personally get Megan Murphy banned from Twitter and then have the audacity to go up in front of a city council and say that they are personally responsible for Megan Murphy's ban from Twitter and furthermore beg a city council to prosecute Megan Murphy for the hate crime of asserting a certain sort of viewpoint that men are not women, quote unquote. I'm not saying that because that would get me banned. You are not allowed to say that because this would get you banned. We are not allowed to look at this because this will get us banned. Or will it? Or will it? So, good evening. Uh, my name is Jessica uh, Yaniv. In the news recently, Holy shit. a trans-exclusionary trans radical feminist named Megan Murphy violated the Canadian Criminal Code by inciting hate against the LGBTQ and trans community, stating men are not women. Can I just say that he sounds exactly like I fucking thought he would? He sounds exactly like it. Women and trans women are not women. In doing this, inciting this speech, I personally got her Twitter account suspended, which got a lot of attention. Uh, <laughs> and create a global outcry for feminist rights and create a global policy changes for social networks such as Twitter and WordPress um, and such. However, Megan Murphy, a Vancouver resident, still has not been prosecuted by VPD for her hate crimes. In the meantime, she has booked a hate rally at the VPL geared to spread hate and transphobia. Even Mayor Stewart called her event despicable Yet, the event still goes on because the city of Vancouver is too scared to cancel her event. However, they increased her event security bill by $2,500, and that number is expected to rise. Your worship and councillors, you the political leaders in Langley are elected to represent everybody. You have a civic duty and responsibility to ensure that everyone has equal access to the services they need. <clears throat> if a city is to, to develop and flourish, it needs to respond and accommodate the diversity of the demographic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry to stoop to this level, but share this and let's see what happens. Well, I guess I did, right? I guess I did. I mean, 
that's what I was talking about, though. I went on a little rant, a little tirade about how people. I mean, I'm I'm looking at the the comments for that gender critical website again, just out, out of curiosity, see what people are saying, and a lot of people are mad that people are sharing links to the Kiwi Farms because they're like, oh, they're all incels, they're all they're they're gamer gators, I guess, and like people are upset that they're getting shilled on gender critical because they're anti feminist or whatever, and it's like. If, if the condition, conditions did not require using websites like the Kiwi Farms to say what you want to say, um, <clears throat> people wouldn't use websites like the Kiwi Farms to say what they want to say, right? Just, uh, just as a thought. And somebody described it as an unholy alliance. Whenever I hear of unholy alliance, I think of the um, Hearts of Iron 4 game where you can, as Germany, ally with Russia, the USSR, to, to take on the Allies. And I like this little icon. <laughs> it's the Holy Alliance. Um, so, okay. I, I briefly looked at this. I need to find it again. I, I, think, I think my buddy sent me a, a link to this. And I desperately want to see, I want to find it. Give me a second. Because the, the guy touches on it in the, uh, the first couple seconds. Uh, choice things. What's this? I have no idea what these links are, so if I get in trouble, that's fine. That's an image. That's an image. Didn't I swear she sent me a link specifically to the... Uh, Specifically for the, the vibrator stuff. And that's funny. I'll help you stick it in. Because <laughs> uh, he does, on his trusted nerd site, he... Ooh, wait. I betcha... I betcha... Wasn't this an archive link? Oh, I'm so butthurt. If you are in chat and you have a link to this, let me know. I'm looking for it. Because on his fucking trusted nerd website, he has... He has a, a entire page dedicated to, uh, to reviewing vibrators. And I desperately want to look at this on... What's this? Ooh, what's this? This sounds like audio. Oh, no, no. That was just a guy making fun of him. That was a fucking letdown. Where is... Chat, help me. Where is the vibrator video? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ooh. Desire Lines got it. My nigga, Desire Lines. Sex... Does it... Wait, he still has this page up on his fucking website? Whatever. Sex Toys Galore Summer 2018 Review by Jonathan Yaniv. Oh, I can print this article. How helpful. As per popular request, I'm fucking sure, another review is coming in January 2019. Haters be gone. So yes, this review is going to be a massive orgy of sex toys for summer 2018. You girls asked for it. You girls got it. The amazing people at XR Brands have sent me a massive load of sex toys to review. Oh, people are enabling this behavior. The Pleasure Curve Flexible 5X Vibe. This bad boy, bad boy will make you come so much that you will be screaming Donald Trump's name over and over. Literally, this bad boy has a ton of power in it. Put this baby on your pussy and you'll be screaming. What? I'm so confused. And he needs to stop using the word pussy. It makes my fucking stomach crawl. Battery life is phenomenal. This soft, flexible vibe will assist you in a solo or partnered seduction. Experience ultra-powerful stimulation with this petite pleasure toy. I love the fact I can just tuck it in my panties and go to town with it. Super discreet. Oh, God. And super comfortable for the most amazing orgasm ever. 
Your vagina deserves this. This project has an MSRP of $60. Get it. Rating 5 out of 5. Oh, he didn't like this one. This is a great product for any guy who wants to get hard fast. Target the head of your penis for a vibrating massage with super powered twin vibrating bullets and super stretchy head encompassing sleeve. Oh, this sounds awful. <laughs> you can experience pinpointed stimulation on one of the most sensitive areas of your body. Well, if there's a more sensitive area in your body than your penis head, uh, let me fucking know. Maybe it's the, the demon hole in your fucking taint that's more sensitive. Just slip the cup over the head of your cock and control the level of vibration with this easy-to-use speed dial on wired controller. Uh... Oh, he rated this one in, uh, 10 million out of 5. Let's read this one. I fucking love this clit stimulator. Gets my clitoris going like crazy. I literally fell in love with this product as soon as I saw it and started using it. This bad boy is by In Me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really funny name for a sex toy company. In Me. Fuck you. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. Just typing about it makes me want to whip this bad boy out and start using it. I get wet just thinking about it. Oh, as we've, as we've talked about, I think uh, get wet is a euphemism for anal leakage. Uh, let, that, let that be your visual, your visual image for, for this paragraph. You can also insert the other end in your pussy for amazing stimulation. I want to see if you mention something about it. No, I was hoping that he would mention something about using it in, uh, in private. This is the one that he used in private. Not only does this vibe look sexy, it feels sexy. I put this in my purse and whip it out whenever I need some vaginal stimulation in the middle of the day in a private place. It's small, discreet, and full of power. I just wish it was easier to insert. Uh-huh. Oh, I trust the nerd with this. Does he have comments? He has no comments. Where's that positive feedback? It's just so, it's just, like, it, it hurts my brain reading this. Because, um, like, I'm, I'm, like, in my head when I read shit like this, you know, I think everybody does it. You read something that you know the backstory to, right? Like, you know he's a guy. You know he's a guy, and you know he has a penis, and he has a butthole, and he doesn't have a vagina, right? So you're reading this, and you're trying to, trying to figure out in, his, in reality how 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 it's actually going down what's actually happening in the world when he when he's describing these products and i can't i can't think of what the fuck is actually happening like what like is he just writing fiction or is is he like shoving things up his butthole like what the fuck is is actually happening in in the world of jonathan deneve when uh <laughs> when he when he writes about these I'll read one more because somebody asked me to I want one that he reviewed negatively he didn't review any negative let's read this one because I, I don't even know what the I, like it looks like a stingray it's like a, it's like a vag stingray clandestine devices mimic vibrator this this vibrator is just freaking fantastic I stick it down my panties and let Mimic take care of the rest. It feels so freaking good against my pussy and looks so luxurious. I rarely have to charge it. It just packs so much power and has a fantastic battery life. My body starts spazzing as soon as I start, as soon as I use it. It just feels absolutely phenomenal. Fully rechargeable and waterproof, the Mimic vibrator was crafted with comfort and pleasure in mind. Its unique ergonomic shape fix fits perfectly in your hand. The simple interface allows intense vibrations to travel to their pinpoint location or a more broad sensitive zone. Equipped with a travel lock? Oh, I guess so that it doesn't cut on. <laughs> oh God, hold up. This is why you need a travel lock.
tell you what Where? Finding luggage. Was, was it ticking? Actually, throwers don't worry about ticking because modern bombs don't tick. Sorry, throwers? Baggage handlers. But when a suitcase vibrates, then the door's gotta call the police. My suitcase was vibrating. Nine times out of ten, it's an electric razor, but every once in a while, it's a dildo. Of course, it's company policy never to imply ownership in the event of a dildo. We have to use the indefinite article, a dildo, never your dildo. I don't own. I had everything in that suitcase. Fight Club is one of the best movies ever made, by the way. If you've never seen that movie, fucking watch it. In the event of a creepy, disgusting sex toy review article, we never want to imply ownership by saying your stingray vibrator. Only a stingray vibrator. I probably couldn't show this page on YouTube. Maybe it's a good thing he DMCA'd me. I get to read his fucking dildo, his dildo reviews now, without worry. Stream.me, people are probably jacking off to this, like, oh shit, I need to get me a stingray vagina it's a vibrator. Uh. <laughs> God, this is hot. <laughs> I remember back in the early aughts, these weird fetishists were calling their dicks stick pussies. Yeah, they call them lady sticks too. That's uh, that's popular. Leave feedback. Hold up. Let me do it with a VPN. I don't want this weirdo getting my IP and sending scary messages to the Slavs. They're going to be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Why is this crazy ogre woman complaining to me about you? How do I... How do I post a comment? This website's broken. Like, look, I'll show you on Firefox. Post comment is a, is a thing down at the bottom, and I cannot click it. Let me post a comment, you, you fucker. What the fuck is this? It's just broken. I have to like join live fire. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Maybe I should just send him an email. I probably shouldn't send him an email because he's threatening me. I could call him. You guys think I should call him? I already know the answer to this. You guys want me to call him, don't you? Say say yes. Say yes, you do. Free censorship, do it. Oh my god, the yes is help. Help. I don't know. It could be considered harassment. I don't want to be a harasser. But he did send me he did send me a um a litigation. I guess I should. Just to resolve it, you know. I'm not I'm not calling him to harass him. I'm calling him to uh to resolve our dis oh god fuck it fine I'll do it I see too many I I'm the peer pressure oh god okay give me a second where the fuck's his number at give me a second give me a second oh jeez. Where's that picture of him I want to use? No, no. I want to. I gotta get the picture here. I'll just throw this picture. This will be fine. Throw this up here for the call. Give me a nice little thumbnail. Thank you for calling JY Knows It Business Consulting. 
If you know your party's extension, please enter it now or press 8 for the name directory. For sales, press 1. For support, press 2. Or press 0 for the next available representative. Please hold while we connect your call to representative. <laughs> Hi, is this Jonathan uh, Yaviv? This is Jessica. Hi, uh, Jessica. My name is Joshua Moon. I'm the owner of the Kiwi Farms. Uh, you sent me a DMCA request on Christmas Day. Uh, did you get my reply to that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, uh, have you read into fair use at all? Uh, my images are not fair use, but um, my lawyer will be sending me um, a message. But anyways, good day. Hmm. Something tells me he didn't read up on fair use. <laughs> Try again. Well, he hung up. It's just uh, he hung up, and that's the end of it. Any, I think any further contact would be harassment. I'm not calling back. Like, I, I got to deal with this fucking faggot, so... <clears throat> I have to, I have to mind my manners. Or what time is it in the U.S.? It's midday. It's not. It's fine. Business hours. Reported to the SBCC. <laughs> Give me the number. Well, it's in. I, I, you know, I don't dox people, right? I'm not. A, I'm not a doxer. Doxing is wrong. Uh, as as far as I'm concerned, but you know, uh, as it were, uh, you know, litigation that kind of stuff is, <clears throat> you know, legal documents are are essentially a part of. I mean, you got to have a return address and stuff. And I don't dox though; doxing is wrong. But you know, if you if you look at papers and stuff, I'm sure you could find a contact address and shit. Uh, easy peasy should call. <laughs> dox in the name of Israel. Look, Israel does not dox. The Palestinians dox Israel first, and then the Israelis just defend themselves. Josh Justavels, thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. There's literally nothing wrong with Josh. <laughs> there's literally nothing wrong with doxing. Quote Josh. Not there's literally nothing wrong with Josh. There's quite a bit wrong with uh with Josh. <laughs> all right. I think that I think that I, that's all I can do. I think I've exhausted the well of cursory glances at the fucking weirdo. Uh Anything else? Any any further requests before I uh, I play my outro song? Call me. I'm not calling him again because I have to deal with him in court potentially. So, so I guess he wasn't watching the stream. Who knows? Maybe he tried to, but then I just started reading and he got embarrassed and left. Somebody's asking me, what did you send me in Discord that you want me to show? I showed all this stuff in Discord. Don't call me a dingus, you motherfucker. Oh, what's this? Okay, this needs to be addressed. This does need to be addressed before I sign off. He keeps claiming that he's intersex. And, and Dick Masterson even fucking asked me, he's like, is this guy really a hermaphrodite? But, um, like, I don't know. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think he is. And humans, intersex individuals are somewhere between clearly male and clearly female in their anatomy. 
but not necessarily gender identity. Oh, God. This is uncommon in humans, but not nearly as rare as a true hermaphrodite. So generally speaking, an intersex individual, individual not have both working parts. They will have ambiguous genitalia, perhaps a small penis and a short closed vagina that does not connect to a uterus, or a normal vagina, but an enlarged clitoris, etc. As far as I know, the atypical development that produces intersex people would not result in fully functioning male and female anatomy. Is that there's this? Um, so I talked to my friends about Tampak Pearl. Big deal. I have girlfriends. LOL. You're trying to make something out of nothing. <coughs> do you have a period? Yes. Since you hit puberty, yes. Yeah, since 13, why do you need to know this? So if you had a period since you were a child, why would you need help with learning how to use tampons? Why would you need assistance with pads? And then this one. You act like this is some huge thing that happens. Me, as a period having woman, have never dealt with this. Why, if you have male reproductive organs, even wearing pads and tampons, you don't have eggs that shed your organs every month? Uh, I was born with both reproductive organs. It's rare, but I get so much hate about it, I don't tell anyone. Well, now 35,000 of my closest friends know. Okay. All right. Well, there we go. Apparently, I don't know. I, I can't tell. Like That doesn't clarify to me, really, if uh, he's intersex or not. I would be curious. If he is intersex, I want to see the weirdo vagina stuff. Show me. Show me it. Because I'm, I'm curious. It's for, uh, it's for science. Virgo Rouge. She's been gone. My waifu, where did you go? I miss you so. Last update a week ago, she really has been bullied off the internet. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Play the audio recording. He's lying out of his boy pussy. Dox is gash. <laughs> Call into Ralph's stream. I don't know. Like, I haven't been able to watch Ralph's stuff recently because I'm in bed usually when that happens. Virgo, no, Bummer, FF, F5, Big Red. All right. All right. I think I want to call it quits there. I've been, I've been reading for about two hours now. I think that's fine. Uh, I have no idea how to set, check super duper chats on stream.me. I don't even know if it's possible. Settings. I I realize I get I do get money on stream.me from people, but I have like no fucking idea how to read it. So sorry if, if uh, I appear impertinent by not ever reading these. Received. Yeah, sorry, I'll have to look that up at some point. Wax those balls, Josh. Oh, in a, a Danish accent. DSP, tomato torture. This isn't about China. Josh, imagine the kind of suction she can give you when she's giving BJs. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, that was that was weeks ago. I'm like, I don't want to fucking imagine Mr. Yaniv at, like, anywhere near my penis. I am not about that. <laughs> please. Please, no. As, okay, somebody's saying that if he was intersex, he would not have a working vagina. He would not have a period. So it's good. Chances are very good that he's completely full of shit. Uh, okay, I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm gonna call it good before I, I start running my mouth for too long. Uh, well, let's just end it there. Thank you guys for watching on this very special stream.me edition of Mad at the Internet. I probably, I don't know if I'll, I'll hack this up into a, uh, into like a highlight clip and upload it to YouTube. I don't know what I'm going to do about YouTube because YouTube is like so hostile and anything you do on it gets you like struck. It's just the worst shit. Oh, well, I have an America theme song for the outro. So I'll see you guys next week in January, and I have no idea what I'm going to do for January, but I do have 
Watch the Flickr video. Okay, people are demanding that I watch this fucking video. I will, hold up. Everybody's probably left now, indignant, because I started talking about Super Chats. Uh, how the fuck do I open stream.me? Hold up, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Where the fuck is this Flickr video at? Give me a second. Sorry, I'm, I'm working as hard as I can. But I'm a boomer, I'm mentally handicapped. Okay, okay, okay. Watch this. Oh, this is a video. I thought it was just a clip. Hey, it's me. Yeah, they they totally um they totally misinterpreted that. What I what I asked was and I asked this paramedic and I asked someone else as well, because they were really nice to me and really open. Is I asked, like, I'm going on the ferry, um, you know, I'm going to be in the bathroom there. You know, this is a ferry that they, they use for field trips. Like, that's how you get to the island. You have to take the ferry. There's either ferry, which is 20 bucks, or taking a float plane, which is 700 bucks. So it's the ferry. Um, it's frequented. So I, 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 I very, very simply asked um what if someone approaches me and asks me for a pad or a tampon and it's their first so i asked and these people just took it completely out of line like it's just unreal um i never <laughs> I never asked um, to that kind of degree. It's just disgusting what people are, are trying to do and what they're saying. It's just unreal. Like, because this paramedic, um, she said, oh, I, I put the pad on her panties and I wiped off her discharge or whatever. She was like so gross. I'm like... Okay, so if someone asks me to write a tampon, then what do I do? I'm like, in, in a joking matter, I'm like, like really, do I go in with them? Do I show them how to use it? What do I do? Like, that's basically what happened here. But people, they took that completely freaking out of line. It's just, I was literally joking with her. I'm like, okay, so if, if, you went into the stall with her. Do I have to go into the stall with her if someone asked me to? I'm like, I'm not going to do that ever. That's like fucking creepy. Like, who in their right mind would go into a stall and put a freaking pad? Or, t I don't even know what to say. It, it, she, she just creeped me out so much. And she's a freaking um, U.S. Army paramedic, too. It's just, it grossed me out so much. Like, I, I trusted these people, like I trust you and several other people on, like, from these groups, because they, they were very, very supportive. So I asked them. I guess that's where it cuts off. Okay, I do have, I do have breaking news, okay. I'm going to show this again. I, I run this uh, forum. Uh, for for Ralph as a gesture of goodwill for the community, and I mention this now before I sign off because <clears throat> uh, I should probably keep Firefox open. They have apparently deleted all of his tweets. I don't know why. Like I, I don't know what the fuck happened at all, but he's been properly fucking nuked. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fucking coming for people. Just a, just a, a fair warning. And if, if things go dark, because right now he doesn't have his Discord or anything set up, I'm trying to set him up a riot.im thing, but um, it, it's, it's more complicated than I originally suspected, so I'm still working on that. But in the meantime, if he does go dark, uh, the forum is still up. So just a, a friendly heads up to everybody who 
uh, might not get a chance to see him <laughs> uh, before before they they lights out him. And with that, here is the outro song. Thank you guys for for tagging along. <laughs>